I'ma crush it. Call me. Welcome to Unsung. I'm Anthony Walker, back from my marathon of playing games, and decided we should go to the movies. We're coming to you from the Hollywood Theater in Dormont. We're here for a tour and to hear more about their Go Digital or Go Dark campaign. Hope you enjoyed last episode's story on Community Auto, and we remind you that if you're considering donating a car now or in the future, contact Community Auto so they can put a well-deserving neighbor in it. And now, let's get to the news. Action! <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Carnegie Science Center's Girls, Math, and Science Partnership was recently recognized by the City of Pittsburgh for its commitment to educating, equipping, and empowering young women in the Western Pennsylvania region to achieve higher success in math and science fields. In a proclamation issued by Mayor Luke Ravenstall, GMSP earned the Citizen Service Award for its work with teachers, parents, and mentors to expand opportunities for girls in the science and technology workforce. The proclamation states, the Girls Math and Science Partnership empowers girls to be architects of change by engaging and educating them through various programs and events that reinforce gender equality in the sciences. For more information about the Science Center's STEM offerings, visit carnegiesciencecenter.org. The Bureau of Autism Services of the Pennsylvania Department of Public Welfare is pleased to announce the availability of many grants to support children and adults with autism spectrum disorder and families that include an individual with ASD. A focus of this project is to reach out and serve individuals and families that are not able to access existing support systems for various reasons. For example, eligibility criteria, age waiting lists, the term family may include an immediate family member or relative or a person providing foster care, legal guardian or custodian, but does not include a person or entity who acts in a paid employment capacity. These grants are funding opportunities that will only be offered once and are time limited. The full application packet, including the application, instructions to apply and frequently asked questions is available at the address on your screen. The deadline for submission is April 5th, 2013. The nearly 300-seat Hollywood Theater is located in the heart of downtown Dormont at 1449 Potomac Avenue. Originally opened as a theater in 1933, the Hollywood Theater is one of the last surviving single-screen movie houses in the Pittsburgh area. Let's take a tour. It's a great place to gather, um, have fun, build memories, and uh, wanted to see it reopened and hopefully open for many generations to come. The theater originally held a little over 700 seats. We not, we're now down to just 280 seats um, after that renovation. This is a 35 millimeter, actually uh, also 70 millimeter projector. This was installed in the theater in 2006 for the reopening in 2007. A platter system. I think there's uh, definitely um, a unique feel to it when you walk into a single screen theater and see a balcony and see some of the old art deco. You don't get that in the uh, multiplexes. Uh, you know, I love the multiplexes as well, but it, you know, it doesn't leave me with, uh, you know, just the, that special feeling, that special day you might have with your children. Uh, comedians and, and, and comedy troops come in and heckle a movie live. Uh, we did Sudden Death. Uh, this weekend, which is a Jean-Claude Van Damme classic. Started up a senior matinee series. We'll show Goonies, Jaws, some of the classics. We'll do quite well with them. You know, I wasn't here when we showed that uh, Goonies, but it, you know, the line was around the block at one point. We, we're not always showing films, we're doing live music. Um, you know, we'll do, uh, we're gonna do a Battle of the Bands with the Dormont Rec Association soon. Poetry series. Um, we rent out the theater a lot, we do, we do birthday parties, we do weddings, we had people get married on the stage here. Last July, Fox, uh, Fox Studios notified the Hollywood that we could no longer show Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, on DVD or Blu-ray. They said show it either on film or DCP, but not on Blu-ray or DVD. The catch is Rocky Horror Picture Show, highly collectible, rare, prints are rare, so that effectively meant that until uh, until we get digital, uh, a new digital projector, we can't show Rocky Horror Picture Show anymore. Only uh, a small percentage of um, classic films uh, in holdings 
at various um, film studio archives have been transferred to DCP. So, and they're increasingly telling you you can't show them on DVD or Blu-ray, and uh, it's presenting a it's presenting a problem. And um, received an initial quote and did some research, basically telling us we needed to raise seventy-five thousand dollars to install a new digital projector um, capable of showing DCP. So that that became our goal for our Indiegogo campaign. But we have hopes that uh, within the next. 30 days or so, we might find ourselves with everything combined halfway to our goal. So I, I knew about Kickstarter uh, initially, that's sort of probably the big name in, in, in the uh, social media fundraising industry. The problem with that is if, okay, you set a goal, what you need, if you don't reach that goal, you don't get the money. I had another friend who recommended Indiegogo, did a little more reading about it, and of course the, the benefit to Indiegogo is that if you don't hit your goal, you'll still keep the money. I think. With fundraising, there's no, sil no silver bullet. Um, so traditional mailings, uh, you know, postcards, special events, um, uh, you know, um, Indiegogo, um, uh, making phone calls, meeting people. You got to do whatever you have to do in order to um, to meet your goals. So uh, the the Pittsburgh's Rocky Horror Troupe, they're called um, JCCP, the Junior Chamber of Commerce Players. It's a reference to something in the film. Have been ever since we reopened, have been ever, almost every two weeks have been um, showing Rocky Horror here. Fortunately, the, the JCCP, they're um, huge fans and supporters of the Hollywood Theater. They've done fundraisers for us. They've committed to, to staying with us uh, instead of moving it to another, to another theater permanently. Our primary mode of engagement with our patrons, for better or worse, is Facebook. People are on it, there's no doubt. And when we post something, new content, you know, we're, we're posting something every day and people are responding to it and sharing it. And that's exactly why something like a link on Facebook um, then gets shared with friends and gets shared with friends. And we're reaching people that we wouldn't normally reach otherwise. Uh, we also have a little bit over 500 um, Twitter followers, which is, is pretty good. Um, for, for uh, a small organization. The old adage goes, if you want to know, then ask your customer. But what happens when you ask a student about state cuts to education? You get the honest story. All right, next I would like to welcome Cheryl Sesse, who is a, uh, a, se a senior at Pittsburgh Kappa. Thanks. The young lady sits with her music teacher discussing with her, with what her future entails, not knowing that her music with her will come to an end. Every note, every scale, classical. Gospel. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> R&B. of a budget cut. I am vocally strong because of you. I remember you telling me, don't give up music, whatever you do. And I won't. Sixth grade, my innocent high-pitched squeal, I called a voice, was what I presented to you. You said, love your squeal, because one day your squeal will love you. Seventh grade, I learned. Eighth grade, I grew. And when I got to ninth grade, I knew exactly what to do. In 10th grade, I was able to sing. And in 11th grade, I sang. But 12th grade hit, and my heart buried in sorrow because I knew you were not going to see the ending result of what I became. It was a budget cut that took you away from me. Now my vocal cords are dry, every note, everything. But I'm not alone. Thousands of other kids say this, sing this same song. When a boy is asked who Picasso is, and his response is, Italian cheese you put on your lasagna, you know that budget cuts have gone too far. When someone from a Spanish-speaking country says, lo siento, which means I'm sorry, when he bumps into you, and, you, and your response is, yes, I want a Spanish mento, you know budget cuts have gone too far. When an African-American boy who already lives in a world of false 
perception where people believe that people of his kind are ignorant, actually wants to succeed but is struggling just a bit and can't even receive help from after school tutoring programs, you know that budget cuts have gone too far. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong and it's unfair. It's like you're, take, you're not just taking our programs and teachers away. You are taking our sense of hope for the future. What's left for our little brothers and sisters? Nothing. You say that we children are the future, but our future is stripped because of a budget cut. Knowledge is power, but your power is taking our knowledge. We want to achieve, but how can that be one's reality if you are taking everything and everyone away from us? And then the Americans are mad because other countries are propelling forward beyond us academically. Maybe it's because we don't have full day kindergartens anymore, or maybe because we have the same classrooms of 39 students, but realistically it's quite difficult to learn in such a crammed environment. My youth, hear my humble cry, open your eyes and realize that this is not right. If you're not doing this for yourself, do it for those young ones who have to live through this absurd reality. Yeah. Let your voices be heard amongst them all. And this war will end in our life, but we will not fall. We are young, but we will fight until everything is all right. Enough is enough. Yes. Yes. I wish I could finish. But you're not here to hear me sing the last go. <laughs> Quiz time. Do you have a child who is five or younger who receives early intervention services in Allegheny County? Or would you like to learn more about the supports and services available for your child and family? meet other families who share your experience and become a better advocate for your child? If you answered yes to any of the above, then join Achieva for early intervention spring training April 20th at UCP class or April 25th, May 2nd, and May 9th at Achieva. For additional information, a training brochure, or to RSVP, please use the contact information available on your screen. Bricolage announced the tickets are on sale for BUS8. Inspired by a 90-minute city bus ride, playwrights, directors, and actors have just 24 hours to write, direct, and memorize six new 10-minute plays. The last stop on the journey is an unforgettable performance at the New Hazlitt Theater. Get your seat by visiting bricolagepgh.org. It all starts April 5th. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or pound sign unsung. Thank you for watching Unsung, and as always, be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghOnVideo.org. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go hit the snack bar. I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Masterpiece I outran a pace car